When we did question 8 and 9, we realized that you can answer all the questions using only the keywords in the statement. So we're going to try and apply the same idea to this question. So it says that in the diagram below, BCD are points on a circle such that BC is equal to CD, EC and ED are tangents, right? So tangent is a keyword because we have a theorem that talks about tangent, the term called theorem, right? So I'm going to write that down. I have um, tangent and then it goes on to say that BC produce meet uh, tangent DE produce at F uh, angle B is equal to X. So it seems like the only keyword we have is tangent, right? And this question is out of 17 marks. So we should get all of these 17 marks based on the keyword tangent and nothing else, right? So we're just combining uh, the keyword tangent and just a few basics, uh, the sum of angles on a triangle, uh, angles on a straight line, and so on. But then in the grand scheme of things, we are answering all the equations using the word tangent. So the first one, 10.1, uh, says, so we have 10.1 says prove given reasons that uh, e1 is equal to 180 minus 2x so 10.1.1 we are asked to prove that e1 is equal to 180 minus 2x so let's look at e1 on our graph so yes e1 here right and then e1 is on triangle ecd right on triangle ECD, uh, we have uh, angle C2 and angle D1. There's nothing else we can do. We have to look at the tangent and consequently the tangent theorem, right? Because that's the only keyword we have. If you look at C2, you will realize that it is equal to angle B, right? Because of the tangent theorem. Angle C2 is between tangent CE and chord CD, and then chord CD subtends angle X, right? So C2 is equal to X. Uh, why are we saying so? The tan chord theorem, right? We don't have much of a choice. We only have tangent. So all the equations we have, we have to answer them based on the tan chord theorem. And then at the same time, uh, D1 is also equals to B, right? Uh, because D1 is between tangent DE and chord CD. And as we've said, chord CD subtends angle B, right? Uh, which is X. So now we can see that D1 is also equals to X. So now you realize that E1 plus C2 plus d1 should be equal to 180 degrees the sum of angles on a triangle so now we can find e1 uh, by saying that it will be equal to 180 minus c2 minus d1 which are all equals to x so it's 180 minus 2x and then that's how you find e1 now we can move to 10.1.2 10.1.2 we still have one keyword, right? Uh, proving that angle E1 is equal to 180 minus 2x doesn't give us any other keyword. So we're supposed to answer 10.1.2 using the tangent again because that's the only keyword we have. So we're supposed to prove that triangle ECD is similar to triangle CBD. So let's look at uh, these triangles on our sketch. So we want ECD. So here's ECD here. And then we're supposed to prove that it is uh, similar to triangle CBD. So we have C going to B and back at D. So when you prove in similarity, you need two angles to be equal to each other. As soon as two angles are equal to each other, the other two remaining angles will be equal to each other and you will have proved that the two triangles are similar, right? So, so the way the examiners name their triangles, right? They name them with respect to the angles that are equal. So angle E in triangle ECD should be equal to angle C in triangle CBD. And then angle C on triangle ECD should be equal to angle B because the second letter 
of how they name the triangle, right? And then angle D on ECD should be equal to angle D on CBD, right? So let's start with angle E on triangle ECD. So angle E on triangle ECD is here, right? It's E1. We know that it's 180 minus X. Uh, so we say in that that angle C E should be equal to angle C on triangle CBD. So it should be equal to this angle and indeed they're equal because i want you to realize something in triangle cbd right uh c3 will be equal to 180 minus 2x where am i saying 180 minus 2x because b we've already established that it is x right but this angle d2 here will also be x because line cb is equals to line cd right so c3 will be 180 minus x minus x so we have proved that c3 is equals to e1 now we can uh, move to the following angles so we're saying that angle c in triangle ecd should be equal to angle b in triangle cbd right so angle c in triangle ecd it's c2 right and then we have already proved that it's equal to angle b because of the tag called theorem so now we can see that c2 is equal to angle b is equal to x why are we seeing so tan chord theorem right now we've proved that two angles are equal in these two triangles so the third angle without proving it already we know that it is equal because those angles should all add up to 180 right so now we are basically done we can conclude that indeed ecd is similar to triangle cbd Pay attention to the letters next time you solve this kind of problems. It always work. And then let's move to 10.2. 10.2 is saying to us, um, we have 10.1, which says uh, proof given reasons. Uh, so we have 10.2.1 is saying that CD squared is equal to CE multiplied by BD. Right? Uh, let me just... Uh, clear these sketches up so that we can have a bit of more clarity. So we want CD uh, squared So we want CD squared to be equals to CE Multiply by what multiply by BD multiply by BD. So if you pay attention here uh, this size that you are interested in are size on our similar triangles right so we can use the fact that those triangles are similar to find 10.2.1 so we moved from the word tangent and now we have figured out that we have two triangles that are similar right so we can use similarities as one of our keyword right but then we're not just taking out of thin air we're using it because we have proved that, that indeed they are similar so for 10.2.1 we're gonna use similarity which we proved through the turn code theorem our main keyword from what we are required to prove you can see that we some way somehow need cd right and then apart from cd we need ce and bd right so our proportionality should involve those sides right from what we are required to prove so let's start with cd so we can say that uh, cd uh, divided by something so cd is the smallest sign of triangle cbd right so let's say cd divided by uh, bd right the biggest sign of triangle cbd and then let's do the same thing on triangle ced so the smallest sign on triangle ced is ce right so we're gonna see ce divided by the biggest side on that triangle which is again cd right and then that should be true if the true angle triangles are similar so now from here we can cross multiply so we can say that cd multiplied by cd will be equals to ce multiplied by bd 
right and you will see that uh, cd squared will be equals to ce multiplied by bd if you take a ratio of the smallest side to the biggest side on one triangle it will be equals to the ratio of the smallest and biggest on the other triangle right it doesn't have to be smallest and biggest in that order you can do it in any other way but then as long as you do the same thing on the two triangles the ratio of the two sides must be equal to each other and that's how you would do 10.2.1 so the way you justify uh, what I just wrote here is by stating that uh, triangle ECD is similar to triangle CBD, right? And then let's move to 10.2.2. 10.2.2, we are required to prove that CF squared divided by EF squared is equal to BD divided by D E right which is a bit complicated but it's fine so cf is not in any of those triangles so we cannot use those triangles to find to prove 10.2.2 we have to resort to something else that right? but uh, take a look at this if line ce uh, is parallel to line bd then we should be then it will be quite easy to say that CF divided by EF uh, will be equal to something, right? Uh, but then are they parallel? Let's look at that. We know fully well that if they're parallel, then uh, we can construct something like this. Not really construct because it's already there. But then uh, this angle C2 should be equal to this angle D2. That's if the two sides are parallel. And then, uh, guess what? That's true because C2 is equal to X. And then uh, D2 is also equal to X. So C2 is consequently equal to D2. So by saying that, we've basically proved that CE is parallel to BD, right? Because we have those alternate angles being equal to each other right and then now uh, since we have proved that we can see that uh, bc divided by cf is equals to de divided by ef right we can we can play around with uh things like this once we have proved that ce is parallel to bd right we can play around with those ideas but that's not where we're going that's not what the question is asking us we have to look at cf and ef right we are guided by the question so let's say uh cf divided by ef and see where that can take us so if we say um cf right cf is this line divided by ef then we can say cb divided by de the two lines ce and bd are parallel so we can get away with that so let's see that so saying that cf divided by ef will be equals to bc divided by ed and why are we seeing that ce is parallel to bd we can get away with that so now uh, we have cf squared and ef squared we know really well from grade 3 that if a is equals to b then a squared should be equals to b squared right no questions asked uh, the other way around is not necessarily true but then if a is equals to b then a squared should be equals to b squared so we can say cf squared divided by ef squared is equals to bc squared divided by ed squared right and then that's it uh we're still not quite there uh what else are we missing what else are we missing okay 10.2.1 uh now we can we know from our sketch that uh bc is equals to cd right so if bc is equals to cd then bc squared should be equals to cd squared and we know exactly what CD squared is equals to from 10.2.1, right? So in place of CD squared, we're going to put uh, CE multiplied by BD. Here it is. So now we can say that uh, CF squared 
is equals to EF squared. And then in place of BC squared, we put in CE multiplied by uh, ED. So here we can have CE multiplied by BD, right? Divided by DE. But we're not oh, divided divided by b or d e squared right but we're not quite there yet we need uh d e on the numerator right so that we can lose that square on the denominator so which one between c e and b d is equals to d e let's look at our sketch so let me remove a few things for clarity so we know that this angle here is x this angle here is x and then here we have x and here we have x so if we have x here and we have x here then ce should be equals to de right so in place of ce we're gonna put de so we have uh, cf squared being equals to ef squared which is equals to in place of ce we put in de multiplied by bd divided by d e squared so d e and d e we are left with c f squared divided by e f squared being equals to b d uh, divided by d e